Hey guys, welcome back to Cyber Platter. Today we'll learn about the waterfall model. What is a waterfall model? It is a software development methodology. Software development methodologies are systematic approaches or frameworks used in the process of developing a software. These methodologies provide a structure for managing tasks, processes, and collaboration within a software development project. Some of the commonly known software development methodologies are first one is waterfall, then there is agile, lean, spiral, iterative, V model, DevOps, and RAD. RAD stands for rapid application development. These are some of the commonly known methodologies, but today we'll focus on waterfall model and learn more about it. What are the pros and cons of it? Uh, what are the steps and where is it usually used? Okay. So water Waterfall is a linear and sequential software development methodology. It follows a systematic step-by-step -step approach where each phase of the development process is completed before moving on to the next phase. Now let's discuss the phases of a waterfall model. The typical phases in the waterfall model uh, includes requirement gathering, system design, implementation, testing, deployment, and maintenance. Requirement gathering is the initial phase where the project team works closely with stakeholders to gather and document the requirements of the uh, software system. This involves gathering the needs and expectations of the end users and also any functional or non-functional requirements. For example, if the project involves developing a new e-commerce website, the requirements may include features such as a product catalog, shopping cart functionality, user registration, payment processing, right? Once the requirements are gathered, we move on to the system design. In the system design phase, a detailed design of the software system is developed by the development team. This includes architecture, components, modules, and interfaces. The design may involve creating diagrams such as the system flowcharts or entity relationship diagrams to depict the structure and relationships of different system elements. Uh, for instance, in the e-commerce website example that we discussed before, the system design phase would outline the database structure, user interface layouts, and interaction between various components. Okay, now we have the requirements and we also have the system design. Next, the software is developed based on the design specifications. Here, the programmer writes the code, creates software components, and integrate them to form a complete system. For example, in the e-commerce website example, developers would write code for front-end interfaces, back-end functionalities, and database integration. This phase involves translating the design into actual code and software artifacts. Now we have the software code ready. The next step is to test. Testing is performed to ensure the software system functions correctly and meets the specified requirements. Different types of testing are conducted, like for example, unit testing. Here, uh, individual software units or modules are tested. Then we have integration testing. This tests the interaction between different components. Then we have system testing. This is testing the entire system as a whole. Acceptance testing, testing by end users to verify if it meets, the, meets their expectations. Then we have security testing. So test cases are executed, defects or issues are identified, reported, and then fixed in the testing phase. Once the software is tested, the software is prepared for release and installation. And this is done in the deployment phase. This includes activities like packaging the software, creating installation scripts, and configuring the system for deployment. The software is then deployed to the target environment such as servers, cloud platforms, or end user devices. In the e-commerce website example, the deployment phase involves setting up web servers, database, and configuring the necessary network infrastructure to make the website accessible to the users. Once the software is deployed, the maintenance phase begins. That is the last phase. This is the live environment. Maintenance phase involves monitoring the software in the live 
environment addressing any issues or bugs that arise and providing ongoing support. Maintenance phase might also include implementing updates or enhancements based on user feedback or changing business requirements. For instance, the e-commerce website may require regular maintenance to fix any software glitches, update product listings, or introduce new features based on customer demands. So these are the six phases. Typically, these are the six phases in waterfall. First is you gather the requirement in the requirement gathering phase. Then you have the system design where you uh, draw the diagram. You know what is the detailed architecture, components, modules, interfaces that are required. Then we have implementation where you write the code. You find out what are the software components that are required, how to integrate all of them together. You configure them. Then once the software itself is ready you test it there are different types of tests unit integration system acceptance security you conduct all of them once they are fixed then you go to the de deployment phase where you release and install the package that is the software and then you have the maintenance phase where the product software is in production and you monitor it for any uh, suspicious activities or any issues or bugs that arise you're providing ongoing support in the maintenance phase. And this may also include, you know, implementing any updates or enhancements. So each phase in the waterfall model relies on completing the previous phase before proceeding. And there is minimal room for iteration or change once a phase is finished. The model is named waterfall because progress flows steadily downward, okay, like from requirement to system design and then to implementation, like a waterfall through the different phases of the project. Waterfall model was developed in the 1970s. Waterfall model was initially developed in response to the growing complexity of software development projects and the need for a structured approach to manage them. Okay? It borrowed concepts from other engineering disciplines such as construction, manufacturing, where sequ sequential and linear processes are common. Now let's see the pros and cons of the waterfall model. First advantage is structure and clarity. The waterfall model provides a clear and sequential structure for software development. Development. Each phase has well-defined objectives and deliverables, making it easier to plan and manage the project. Another pro is documentation. Waterfall emphasizes comprehensive documentation as each phase requires the documentation of requirements, design, and other project artifacts. This documentation can be valuable for future reference, maintenance, and knowledge transfer. Another pro is the alignment with the stakeholders. Stakeholder involvement is typically higher during the early phases of the project, such as requirement gathering and uh, system design. This allows for clear communication and alignment between the development team and the stakeholders. Another pro is easy to understand and manage. The linear nature of the waterfall model makes it relatively easy to understand and manage. It is suitable for projects with well-defined and stable requirements where changes are minimal. Now let's move on to the disadvantages of a uh, waterfall model. First one is lack of flexibility. This is one of the major drawbacks of the waterfall model that it lacks uh, flexibility and adaptability to change. It assumes that all requirements can be defined and frozen upfront, which is often unrealistic in the real world projects. If changes are needed, it can be challenging to incorporate them after a phase is complete. Another con is limited stakeholder engagement. That is, the stakeholder involvement tends to decrease as the project progresses. This can lead to limited opportunities for stakeholders to provide feedback or influence the direction of the project. Then the third risk is, third con is high risk of requirement misalignment. Due to the sequential nature of the model, there is a high risk of discovering requirement misunderstandings or mismatches late in the project. If requirements are not accurately captured upfront, it can lead to costly rework and project delays. Another disadvantage is limited early validation. 
The waterfall model does not prioritize early validation or feedback. Testing typically occurs towards the end of the development process, which may result in the identification of defects or issues at later stages when they are more expensive to fix. Then another con is long development cycle. The linear and sequential nature of the waterfall model can result in longer development cycles since each phase must be completed before moving on to the next, the overall project timeline may be extended. The suitability of the waterfall model depends on the specific project requirements and context. It may be more appropriate for projects with well-defined and stable requirements where predictability and rigorous documentation are crucial. Like for example, government agencies have utilized the waterfall model for developing information systems. Uh, including tax management systems, citizen uh, service portals, administrative software. These projects often require comprehensive documentation and adherence to strict regulations and security standards. Also in the past, the development of operating systems often followed the waterfall model. Phases such as requirements gathering, design uh, phase, implementation, testing and deployment were carried out sequentially. Examples include older versions of Windows and Unix operating systems. Waterfall model has been historically used in various industries. Um, right now, there is a shift towards more agile and iterative methodologies in the recent years. Okay? Agile approaches offer more flexibility, adaptability, allowing for quicker response to changes and evolving requirements. So now you should know what is a software development methodology, um, what are the different types, at least the names. And then we discussed about what is the waterfall model. I will create different videos for Agile, maybe Spiral and Iterative as well, DevOps too. I will link it in the description box, okay? So waterfall model, what is it? It's a linear sequential process uh, model, which happens step by step. What are the typical phases of the uh, waterfall model? Requirement gathering, system design, implementation, testing, deployment, and maintenance. We also saw uh, what are the pros and cons of the waterfall model and where it can be usually used. It is usually used in well-defined and stable projects where documentation is very crucial. And we also saw a couple of real-time examples for waterfall model, but now the shift is towards the agile methodology in the real world, okay? That's it for today. I will see you in another video with another topic. Bye-bye till then.